Morning, guys. We are chatting to uh, Darren and Duan this morning. The guys from Paul Adventure Trails, um, also with a nice specialized shirts and caps there. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, Duan and Darren, you guys have been putting together the Paul MTB Challenge taking place on the 1st of May. Uh, big event for Paul, big event for the trails. Um, what's, uh, what's the story? Yeah, I think Yaku, uh, I think after the last year of absolute mayhem, um, I think guys are, I mean, we're seeing it in the in the emails and the, and the calls and all that type of stuff. The guys are really keen to get back racing. Um, from a trail's perspective, you know, we've been working on this network for four years now um, here in Paul. So it's exciting to see that it's, it's growing the way that it is. Um, and um, uh, Cisco and Della and them at CSA, when, when the bids went out for the national champs, um, we were very, very honored to be, be able to ask to, to, to look at it. Um, and then, yeah, winning the bid. Um, unfortunately, we've had to postpone it twice. So, so hopefully third time lucky on 1st of May, but everything looks good and all systems go. And um, I think the guys have been working hard the last couple of months and I think Paul as a whole can't wait to to host the guys. Um, obviously it's, it's a bit sad not to be able to to allow two and a half or three thousand people that would normally come. Um, we're very restricted in numbers depending on the, the current level. I think at the moment it's about 500. Yeah. Excellent. So this is now, this is Paul's official mountain bike race. Yeah. Right. Okay, so that's the one part. The second part is this takes place on the Paul Adventure Trails Network, exclusively. Mm -hmm. yep. All of it. All 87 kilometers of the long distance marathon and all 20 odd kilometers of the short distance all takes place on the Paul Adventure Trail Network. Yeah. Right. And that's now, and that you've, that you've mentioned now, you've been working on for the last four years. And some absolutely amazing stuff across Spice Route, Diamant, Venice, the specialized trail zone. Rearbooks Kluwer over the reserve. I mean, with some killer climbs in there, uh, which we'll touch on just now. But Darren, so let's talk about the registration on the day, COVID protocols, what's in place, what what what's the story on that? Yeah. Look, I think the first thing to note is that, um, like you mentioned before, it's Paul's official mountain bike race. Um, and um, we have all of our partners in Drakenstein and all um, a, a group of amazing sponsors that have really come to the party um, uh, to to assist us to put the event together. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have been possible. Um, the processes alone to get an event approved and the logistics around it is literally double um, what it normally is. And, and obviously, that then comes down to the costs and that as well. You know. Um, but we've really worked hard to make sure that everything is sorted out. Um, first and foremost, it's not just an, uh, the South African Championships or the National XEM Championships. It's the Paul MTB Challenge first and foremost, and it's open to absolutely everybody that wants to take part. So you don't have to be a, a pro cyclist. You can be a family, a father and a son or whoever, um, just a weekend warrior, there's a distance for everybody to take part in. So we've got a 20, a 40, a 60, and then the 88K or the 85K. Um, and it's open to, to everybody that wants, that wants to take part. Um, within that race or within the day, there will be separate start groups which go off first, which will form part of the South African Championship. So every um, uh, uh, age category, starting from um, juniors all the way up to elites will have their own starting group before the main race so as an example on the on the 80 85k you'll have the elites going off first and then five minutes later we'll start the different age groups up to the open groups so there's no separation or anything like that when it comes to um, different processes that need to be put in place and and all that type of stuff we're handling that all in the background and I think that's where, they, where a little bit of confusion is coming. People think because it's a South African Championships, they can't take take part, and that's not the case at all. So, yeah, get your entries in, and and it's going to be a great day out there. Um, Duan will go through the routes a little bit later. Obviously, it's not a it's not a um, a Jeep track race. Um, <laughs> it's really something. It's really something that we put together, like you mentioned earlier on our on our network, and it's it's a proper race. You know, all the distances and that. 
we try to make it that it's you know people not only get great value for money but they they experience paul um and and in all its splendor put it that way you know so we're really excited to showcase that everything from the amount of single track the views um uh, the stuff on the routes and that so that's quite exciting for us um to be able to showcase the town and that um we selected um obviously with COVID restrictions and that there's there's a lot of focus around social distancing and being able to to allow people to come out and enjoy themselves in a safe environment um, and a natural venue for something like get a spice route destination you know it's a great farm it's a it's a massive farm with a whole lot of different artisans there's four different restaurants a lot of open space and that so um abby and charles and the, and the team from spice route have, have really come to the party and that's going to be the host venue for the start and the finish um and then you people will note on 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 the newsletter that's going out in our, our social media and that type of stuff that the roots that duan will discuss a little bit later really encompasses the entire poll so what we're saying to people is come and experience poll there's like 15 different stopover or point uh, uh, points along and around the mountain there's rebox clue there's diamant there's Knus, um, uh, Lanscrew and all these different venues that have all got great coffee shops and, and activities and that type of stuff. So there's no need to go and stay at one venue um, or just the start venue, the start finish venue. Go and explore Paul um, and you'll get to see people on the route at the same time. And this does a couple of things. Number one, we're supporting local and number two, we're spreading out the field a bit when it comes to uh, families and friends and all that type of stuff and making it a bit safer for everybody. Absolutely. Um, Actually, on that on that topic, let's quickly just um, let's quickly jump in. Uh, well, two things. Number one is you posted some amazing uh, photos uh, yesterday or today that you've taken. Either it's, I think it's Summit Sunrise and Summit Sunset on the trail, which is all part of that. Um, so, yeah, so, right, so yeah. go have a look at the um, uh, Instagram and and, and and social media and, and Facebook pages of of Paul Adventure Trails, and there's some really amazing uh, photos there of what you can expect on the day. Uh, on the second point, let's quickly just run through that map from a destination point of view mm. uh, and just sort of show people where they're passing through from a business point of view so we can um, so they can make some plans around where mm. they could where they could see the riders um, yeah. uh, get into action. So I'm going to open this quickly. You should see that on your screen in a second. Um, right, so starting at, at Spice Route, as you said. Yeah. Uh, so and then Spice has got um, five, to four different restaurants. There's a whole lot of different activities. There's more than enough space there. Yeah. Then if you look at look to your right hand side, you've got Fairview um, Wine and Cheese Farm. They've yeah. also got an amazing restaurant. You've got Diamant. Um, then lower down after that single track, you've got um, Knus Karu Combes. There's yeah. a lot of great, and that's your I think your second or your third water point for the long distance guys. Mm -hmm. um, great place to, to, to see to see loved ones and, and actually just um, enjoy a day out. Um, then if you go up into the reserve, uh, I think it's water point three for the long distance and five for, for the 60 and the 40. Um, that's in Paul Mountain Reserve as well at Christmas Camp. Um, it'll be a bit difficult to get up there, um, mm -hmm. but everything is gravel roads and that type of stuff. So people that know the area will be able to get up into the reserve and that's also a great point. Drakenstein and Paul Tourism are actually managing that water point. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun for everybody. Um, and if you scroll down right the way down to Rebox Cliff, um, Rebox Cliff is obviously one of our babies and, a, and an absolutely amazing venue and the ideal place to stop and have a breakfast and mm -hmm. let the kids play on the grass area while you watch everybody come past. A lot of space to social distance and yeah, yeah. get a great bite to eat or a glass of wine nice and early in the morning. Um, so, so rear boxes, yeah, there's plenty of grass there, great place, uh, and they're passing right by the restaurant. That's correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so and that's, then you've got that's, a, that's a great spot to pick as well. Yeah, then you've got Ridgeback after that. Ridgeback have also just launched a, a great new coffee shop and tasting venue and that type of stuff that people can stop over. They'll be open. Um, and then quite a unique place, if you look there where you are now, is Bistro 44. Um, so Martins is an ex-Springbok rugby player and he's got a proper 
Paul style farm story, <laughs> which is um, I can I can really you know in a in a, when you race organise, uh, we always used to say the mornings are for pie and coke, and that you have the first thing in the morning because you taste it for the rest of the day and you don't have to worry about eating. So, but my team guys are definitely not like that. Um, but he makes he makes a, makes some great pastries and coffee and that type of stuff. Another great venue to stop. And then okay. further up, you've got Alpaca Loom, um, where the kids can go and see the alpacas, and they've got a great coffee shop there. And then you've got Lanskrin, um, uh, Lanskrin um, Wine Estate, which is right next to Spice Street, just before the finish. He gets and Hugo, and then it's a fourth generation farm, absolutely stunning place. So, yeah, I mean, it's so many great places to stop. Um, so, you don't just have to stay at the start finish venue, you can actually go and explore Paul. Um, for the day and, and what we've done as well is through Drakenstein and uh, the Tourism Authority in Paul and Elise and them, if you go onto their website on paulonline.com, they've got accommodation options available and different activities that you can take part in because there's obviously going to be a lot of people coming from out of town so it's a great yeah. opportunity to make a great weekend out of it. Um, and then something very, very exciting that, that, that we'd like to add is that each um, person that actually enters um, the event will receive as part of their goodie bag um, a, a, what we call the Spice Street Passport. Now what this passport does is that you can use over the entire weekend um, and you can go on the, from the Friday to the Sunday or the Monday and that you can go and do a wine tasting or a cheese tasting at Fairview or you can go and do a CBC beer tasting, there's the gin tasting at Wilderer and um, there's massive specials at the restaurants with free beers when you buy a burger and yeah the, the the offering in the passport is something really really special i think it's worth about 400 or 500 grand alone just that passport so it's offering with the rest of the goodie bags some great value and and offering people that spend the weekend yeah great great opportunity to explore a bit yeah. Some off the trails activities. Mm. Yeah. Right. Um, so quickly then, uh, in terms of information around the event, um, I mean, you've you've put together a whole lot of stuff on the Entry Ninja page, which actually we'll share quickly. Um, but there's there's a there's a load of stuff on there, uh, and I and I suspect and I suspect or I suppose uh, this should really answer everyone's questions. Is there anything you want to clarify? In terms of what's on here, or where there's been questions that that mm. may uh, still be. Where, where some individuals may still be confused or not 100% sure. Yeah, I think um, just the main touching point, Yaku, is just the schedule over the weekend. Obviously, entries are very limited, so there's not many left. Um, registration will actually be with our title sponsor, Specialized. Um, so okay. at the new Specialized Paul store, um, the location is there, so registration will be on the Thursday yep. and Friday. I know they're running massive specials in that as well. Um, so we're excited to, 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 to have registration here at Specialized. Um, then um, uh, on the Saturday, uh, on this, uh, as part of your, uh, we'll go through the COVID restrictions now, but you'll then hand in your forms and collect your race numbers and that there, there's no on the day entries. Okay. And then we've got um, the various distances and start times and that type of stuff have originally been posted. Um, they can have a look on the Entry Ninja site or our website comes to the open groups, you choose your poison and, and enter accordingly and, and yeah, um, more than enough water points on the route that Duan will go through. Um, we can't obviously with COVID restrictions have all the fanfare around the start finish and that type of stuff. Um, so um, prize giving will be done within 20 minutes of, of, the, of the leaders coming in for each distance. We'll do a podium prize giving and then it's about people just spreading out and going to the different venues and, and that we obviously can't have people around the start finish venue and, and and that that brings me to to obviously the COVID restrictions and what we are allowed to do and the processes that we've put in place um, again we've worked very closely with Drakenstein and, and and our safety authorities so every entrant um, with your final race briefing in the next couple of days you'll receive a, a COVID form that you need to, and I, I can't stress it enough, you actually, you need to print the form out and you need to fill it out. When you arrive at, at, at number collection at registration on the Thursday or the Friday, if you do not have that form with you, you will not be given your race number. So you have to hand in your form and that will, um, with your proof of entry, and that will then um, allow us to give you your race number. 
on the morning of uh, that form needs to be filled out and that type of stuff on the morning the entire race so it doesn't matter whether you're in your getting out of your car and walking in the open field masks are obviously compulsory the only time you can take off your mask is literally one minute before start when you're in your start shoot again we're asking people to just be very aware when you if you see your start time is at at eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning don't arrive at, at, at five o'clock and start hanging around the start finish area we're not allowed that so try and come come a couple of minutes before your start time you'll then your temperature will be taken at the start shoot if your temperature checks out you'll be allowed into the start shoot um, and you can then um, get in and, and 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 get going on the route to try and uh, minimize groups and all that type of stuff if your start time if you're a little bit earlier or whatever the case may be please just hang around the venue don't hang hang around in groups and make sure the masks and that are on um, as soon as you cross the finish line make sure you've got your mask with you and, and back on and sanitize and and all those type of things you know um, so hopefully if but i think everybody is after a year of doing this everybody is pretty aware and, and hopefully we can all just um uh, you know j j j just be cognizant of what's happening and 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 be safe as, as safe as possible you know, we want we want it to, we want to have more more events. Sure. So just two things then. So so registration number collection Thursday and Friday, 29th and the 30th. Any time the stores open between eight and six or whatever it may be. Ten to five. Ten to five. Right. So ten to five Thursday and Friday. Correct. I think Friday uh, Friday will probably be up until about six o'clock at the latest. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is the 87. And as Darren said earlier, all of them started spice routes and ended spice routes. What do they need to look out for? I'm so happy. You'll see, as we start at spice route, we're going to send them down to the small loop um, in the single track, but there's some jeep track in between just to give them some space um, to get the racing snakes out in front. Or if you just want to get a better position, that's basically where you're going to need to um, get into that position. Then as soon as they start going back up, we're gonna get them onto the wall. Um, there, <laughs> we're gonna see who has the legs to absolutely just power through a climb. I mean, that's a section of what, a 3K section. Um, and you're climbing, I think it's 700 meters in just that section alone. So, oh, 300 yeah, meters. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say it's not quite <laughs> that much, but uh, <laughs> it may feel like it, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're going to go down from about almost 200 meters up to almost, yeah, just over 500 meters. Yeah. Uh, so 300 meters in, uh, yeah, three kilometers. So, so, so tough one, tough one. Oh, yes. I mean, the um, elevation hits 40% on two pieces. So, yeah, that's, the, and there's also not enough space to pass there next to each other. Um, but yeah, as I soon as we... I think that's sort of the key here is that, that once you're in here, you're sort of stuck until you get out um, towards the advocate. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And then I uh, soon from there, we're going to start going down um, into the single track, lots of flurry burns, um, a bit of technical as you head into the Amman. You have the rock gardens, um, the pickup sticks or log garden, as Darren calls them. Yep. Uh, we've got the small drops, but we've renovated them. All of them have bridges now, so they're a lot easier. Uh, you don't have to worry about anything too serious with the drops. But watch out for the technical rock gardens. You then, mentioned that there are beelines. Yes, there are beelines next to each of the technical sections. So if you feel that it's too technical or you're just not ready for it, then you can always just take the beeline. Right. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so then through Diamant down to the specialized trail zone down here, and then the Paul Toll Monument climb back up. Yeah, so as you come down through uh, Diamant, you're going to go down the Advocate, lots of flowy trails. Uh, you're going to go between the two gorges, going to head down into Kneskarokon Base at the specialized trail zone. From there, it's a lot of jumps, berms, um, really flowy sections there's a bit of technical here and there but that's nothing to worry about um there's also places here and there where people can pass each other so also if you're gonna go for a higher um, position then once again here's a place to do it then we're going to start heading up with the tall monument road then from there we're going to get into the illuminator 
that's going to take you basically around the big rock of Ball Mountain. Um, the eliminator is here, right. right. Yes. Yeah. They, there's enough space to pass there um, if you have the legs to do it on a climb. But yeah, from there, we're going to head back around, basically connect to the wall section and then go all the way um, through the reserve. On the reserve as well, there is space to cross or to pass each other. But once again, from here, your racing snake should be in front and then all of the people behind, you just want to enjoy it. Please enjoy it. The views are amazing up there. Um, I don't think you'll experience anything else <laughs> like those views. From there, we're going to start heading down into Rebels Kloof. As you can see, um, Darren also pointed this out to me. The single track that we usually use to go up at Rebels Kloof, the first section as you're coming down, Yaki. Um, we're going to use that to go down instead of coming up, just to incorporate a little bit more single track there, because that's a really nice section. From there, we're also going to go down into the um, tight switchbacks. There's a bit of technical there, a few tight spaces, a um, bit of rock gardens, but a lot of um, tight, tight switchbacks coming down. Lots of time there's, to recover, yes. I mean, there's plenty yes. of downhill coming oh, down yes. Rebox Cliff. Those that know Rebox Cliff will know that that Super Bowl section is absolutely amazing. and. Uh, it's just some of the best mountain biking around Pole and, and beyond, I think, actually. Oh, yes. I mean, those are the trails that made me fall in love with mountain biking. So I think people will absolutely love that. From there, you're going to head stunning. back around into um, a loom and ridge back. Uh -huh. From there, you're just going to start going around the mountain with the normal orange um, pole adventure trail route. And this is the go, tar section that they'll, they'll cover. Yes, here. the small tar section. Also places to pass there, but we do have traffic and whatnot, so you don't have okay. to worry about um, cars getting in the way or anything like that. Right. And then from there, you're going to head through each of the farms, like Alpaca Loom, Lanskrun, um, and then head straight back to Spice Route where the finish is. Okay, so the numbers then, 85 kilometers and 2,000 meters of climbing, 2,089 meters. So that's going to be a tough day out, but uh, oh, yes. there's some amazing, amazing sessions uh, in that 85 kilometers. Okay, uh, anything, anything else on the 85? Can we, can we jump to the to the 60? Uh, if you're ready, we can jump to the 60. Excellent. All right, let's have a look at the 60 quickly. So the, the numbers quickly: 62.2 kilometers, 1,372 meters of climbing. So. Not that much for, for uh, the route around Paul. I mean, we we used to higher numbers, especially on the climbing side. Yeah, the 60 was actually put together really well by Darren. Um, so it's basically the same as the 80, just a few of the sections, with the really hard sections like the walls cut out, um, which makes it a bit more free flowing, going to get a lot more time through uh, the sections like Diamant um, and down to Knus, yeah. down the Advocate. Once again, down to the Specialized Pole Trail Zone. You're going to see everything we've been working on for the past three months. From there, we're just going to head back up with the Tar Road, up the Eliminator. Yeah, they get um, the Eliminator as well, but they skip the wall. Yes, they skip the wall. And then you're going to start heading around to the dams and all the way to Rebel Club. There's also a lot of places there to pass if you're going for the higher spots. Um, I mean, look, the reserve is, this is all Jeep tracks. I mean, there's, there's plenty of opportunities here to pass. Oh, yes. Is that right? Yeah. Obviously, yeah. on the downhill here, it's a bit, it's a bit tight. There, there's here and there a spot, but generally speaking, uh, there's not that much there. Um, no. Um, as you're going down, there's as you said, not a lot of places to pass there. It's also you're going downhill really fast. Um, if you're going to pass someone, try to be safe about it. I mean, you don't want someone getting hurt on the day itself. Um, from there, it's just again, straight down to Rebox Club, um, straight next to the restaurant, around to Ridgeback, Alum, again, the tar section into the reserve pod there at Bistro 44, and then. Yep. Park Alum and Lanskrun back to Spice at the finish. 
All right, so here you also want to make sure you've got a good position before you get into Diamant, really. Yes. This last section before Diamant, because there it gets tight and Diamant is somewhat difficult. And this little section here, all of this, you want to sort of be well positioned before you hit that. Yeah, so from the start, gun for your position, um, try to get out in front or just somewhere that you feel comfortable. And then as soon as you get into the technical sections like Diamant and um, the Advocate and Specialized Trail Zone, from there, just stick to your position until you get time to pass again. Yeah, which is only up here again. I mean, well, yeah, sort of from yeah, here. As soon as you hit Tom Monument Road from there. Yeah. Okay, all right. So the 60 looks lacquer. I mean, it looks like a nice route. Right, okay. so then uh, let's jump on to, and again, with the same year, uh, same comments, obviously with the technical sections, there are uh, so-called chicken runs. Um, yes. you know, if you're not comfortable, then take the beeline and, and go around these obstacles that are part of the XEO courses at uh, Diamant and, uh, and Specialized and so on. Yeah, rather take the beeline than put yourself out for uh, hopefully upcoming races. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, let's jump to the 40. 40, 41.5 kilometers with a thousand in climbing, so a decent 40. Oh yes, this is my favorite route between all of them. <laughs> Not that I don't do the long distance, but hey. Um, yeah. So the 40 also starts at Spice Street itself. Um, like all of the routes, it's going to go down. You're going to get a lot more of a single track in Spice Street itself. Um, some really fun flowy sections down there, uh, all the way to uh, next to the R101. From there, you're going to head straight to Diamant. Um, again, in Diamant, the technical sections, rock gardens, the pickup sticks, um, some of the drops. Then down the Advocate into the specialized trail zone. Yep. Again, really flowy sections, a lot of jumps, places to just enjoy yourself and make time. From there, Fly on to the Eliminator to the top. Yes. And then you're going to start coming down with the reserve trail back into Spice Route and then all the way back to the finish. That looks like a great route. Okay, and then there's one last one, which is the 20. 20 kilometers, 187 in climbing. So it's a fairly flat 20. Mostly, yeah. well, in fact, all of it on Spice Route. Yes. So this is basically just um, showcasing all of Spice Route's beautiful trails, all of the single track pockets, um, again, going down next to the R101, the N1. Um, from there, basically, just enjoy yourself. I mean, this is the part where you can absolutely gun it between the single track pockets and just try to go for that that number for, number one spot. I mean, this is a really nice route for that. Excellent. Right. Okay. So that's all four routes covered. Uh, we've got COVID protocols, we've got registration. Darren, Duan, thank you. Anything else? Uh, closing remarks? Yeah, all the info on the Entry Ninja page, all the info on the Trail Forks pages. Yeah, I think it's it's everything's uh, we're updating as we as we're getting more uh, getting the info, the fi all the final info, and that's so just keep a watch out for 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 any updates and that um obviously we we work on a daily basis with all the safety safety protocols and that type of stuff so it's important just to keep up to date and then once again you know um uh, massive thanks to our sponsors and um, we don't we, th this event is is an, a massive massive challenge and an expense and that um so every guys from optimum to top watch we've got oakley involved um We've got Penn Bev, I mean, there's a list of guys um, that have really come to the party and I think that's also helped with when it comes to prizes. I mean, the, if you look at the prize package and what the guys are, what the guys have got on offer there, it's absolutely stunning, you know, so um, a massive, massive thanks to, to all of them and come and support the event, come and support Paul and, and hope to see you guys on the 1st of May. There's about 100 entries left somewhere around there. So I can't see that lasting a couple of um, and much longer, and then we obviously have to close the entry. So yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. Unless things change, but uh, you know we never know. It's been a tough year, for, a tough year for events. You never know what to expect in the next week or two. Yeah. Guys, thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to yeah. you soon, and we'll see you on the first. Okay. All the best in the preparation okay. over the next two weeks. But it sounds like everything's done and dusted, and you're ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well,
or not. <laughs> yeah, at least the trails look good. So, I mean, that's the most important part, I think. But good luck and uh, we'll see Thanks, you the first. Take care. Cool, man. Thank you. All right. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Bye. That's good. Phase one of Rebooks Glue Hero Adventure Trails. We've got everything from a 3K kiddies beginner trail you can take anyone on up to a 25 kilometer pretty much an XC adventure it's amazing the views are stunning it's quite a workout but that's what we want to give we've got other loops like our 10 kilometer blue trail lots of features and flow trail then we've got our 15 kilometer red trail a bit of fitness that you're going to need for it a bit of technical descending <laughs> and the indicator for everyone. We want you to come out, bring the friends and family, bring the kids. We'll be going all around the Reeboks Cliff Wine Estate. It's an amazing view and we hope everyone gets to enjoy it.